Hello golfers, Brian Pate here. I want to talk to you about aiming your stroke. So what we're doing is standing in our big circle again. What I'm going to do is Hello golfers, Brian Pate here. I want to talk about aiming our stroke. What I'm doing is standing in our big circle. In the previous video we talked about the circle, how it moves. Another little image we could use is the blue ball is the middle of our circle and we're swinging the putter around that blue ball. If I jump in here, that blue ball might be around my buttons. If I'm using my wrist, it might be a little bit lower, kind of by my belt buckle. And if we're using our rib cage, it might feel like it's way up behind us, making a bigger circle. If I put this ball back down, not everyone aims the putter straight. What I mean by that is at setup, not everyone's aiming the pink noodle or loft visual at the target. Some people aim that face a little bit closed and then they make a little putting stroke and this returns slightly closed. So the ball launches about 90% of where the club face is pointing. If I was aiming this loft out to the right, made a little putting stroke, returned the loft out to the right, the ball is going to start to the right of our intended line. What we got to do is we got to imagine our big circle here. If I was someone that was aiming to the left, I might want to shift my big circle slightly to the right. So if I take a little left aim and then make my circle slightly more to the right, what we're going to have an impact is a club face that's going to return the golf ball down our intended target line. So we could have a face that's set up, say closed one or two degrees, and opposed to a perfectly straight putter shaft or a perfectly parallel circle, we can alter that and shift it just slightly towards the right one or two degrees. So a face that's closed two degrees and a circle tilted to the right two degrees is going to get that face now working down the target line so that impact our face will be square. If we're someone that aims a little bit open, and we don't get that putter face back to square, we could do the opposite. We could take our big circle, aim it just slightly to the left, and now at impact, that ball can start more on line. So in doing this, I also want to mention the bottom of our circle right here. From where the putter goes down to where the putter goes up in that circle is our low spot. As we start collecting the ball out here, that would be a positive attack angle or rise angle. If we start catching it in the back side, that would be a negative rise angle. If we catch it on the back side, we don't have enough loft, you could see here that we might smash that ball into the ground. If we catch it too far on the front side, we might have too much loft and it might launch it in the air and put too much spin around it. So as we're using these concepts, just tweaking it just slightly, we don't want to get something that's too far in to out, too far out to in. Also, if the ball gets too far forward in our stance, could we potentially return with too much loft to the golf ball? If it gets too far back in our stance, can we return it with not enough loft and smash it into the ground? And then how is our body moving our putter? How the loft is working, how the putter is working in a circle, how our body is moving it relative to our pizza slice. So use this little concept. If you're someone that's always missing their start line slightly left, your club face at impact is slightly closed. Maybe turn the circle just slightly to the right and feel like you're going to hit the right edge of the putt on a 10 footer. See if that will go in. If we're missing it on the right side, maybe we feel like we're making a little putting stroke slightly towards the left side of the cup to get our ball launching online. The other thing you could do is practice Goldilocks. If I was someone that's missing on the left side, what would it feel like for the heel, the bottom of the club, right here to win the race at impact. And you can see what that's doing, it's opening the loft. If I'm someone that's missing on the left side, that means maybe the toe is a little too closed. That was our left, our heel. If I was someone missing on the right side, maybe our heel is winning. And then we want to feel like our toe is passing just a little bit 
so it can become more square. So we got two options here. We can aim our stroke or we can get our putter feeling like it's closing slightly more or opening slightly more just to control the start line. So use those two concepts to help you gain more control of your start line.